Hello and welcome to part 7 of the Backrooms Game Lab. In this part, I'm going to be showing you how to create a locked door with several keys around the map. So you can hide keys that go to their own locked doors, and you can have several locked doors, several keys that all go to their own locked doors. You'll be creating a key that has a key name. However, since this series is so beginner friendly, I won't be creating the script with you in the series. However, if you do want to learn how to script, consider looking at the infinite generation video that just launched that shows you how to code and do all of that other more technical stuff. However, in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to import the scripts to get everything working. So to find the scripts, go over to the Google Drive, which should be in the description down below. And you're going to see a new part here called Part 7 Backrooms Game Lab. Let's go into this and you'll see that we have two folders, new audio and new scripts. We're going to go ahead and just download both of these. And if you want to look inside, you can go ahead and do that. This has all the key stuff that we're going to be using. And this has all the audio that we're going to be using. Of course, you can import your own audio, but these are just very, very placeholder audios that I found around the internet. Now I'm going to go back out to the Backrooms game files and just download part seven's entire folder here. And it should start zipping at the bottom of the screen. And when it's done zipping, just go ahead and extract it. And it should open inside of your downloads folder, allowing you to see all of this stuff inside of here. Now let's head back into Unity and we're going to import these by just coming over to our assets window here, right clicking, pressing import new asset, and then going to the part seven vacuum scheme lab. I'll just go ahead and import both of these folders by just dragging them into my scene. Just like this, and this. And now I have two things here that are called new. What I want to do is just come into the new audio folder when this is done compiling. And I'm just going to drag all the audio from this new audio folder into my old audio folder here. So I'm just going to come into it, click both of these, and then drag them over here into audio. So I can now just delete this blank folder here. And I'll do the same for my scripts. So I'll select all of this by just clicking the first one and shift clicking the last one. I can select all the ones in between. And I'll just drag them all into my scripts folder here. So when that's done, I can also delete this new scripts folder and come into my old scripts folder, which is right down here when this is finished compiling. <laughs> And what we're essentially going to do is create two objects here, but I want to be a little bit more organized. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of my scripts folder by right clicking, going to create, going to the top and pressing folder. And I'll call this folder key. Um, yeah, I'll just say keys. Now I'll drag everything that has key in the name into my keys folder, just for some organization. Now, if I come into my keys folder, we'll see that we have three scripts here. The first script is called key, the second script is called key door, and the third script is called key manager. So essentially what I want to do is create an empty object that has the key manager so that there's an object that is kind of like an overlord of all of the key scripts here. And that's essentially going to allow us to have just one global, just like I said, overlord that controls what, what keys the player has or doesn't have in their inventory. So to create this inventory mechanic, I'm just going to come into my hierarchy, right click it, go down to create empty and, and press it. Now I have a new game object here and I'll rename it in the inspector to say key manager. I'll also give it a little icon here, though it's completely optional. It doesn't really change anything about the actual mechanics. Next I'll drag my key manager into this area right here, which adds the component onto it. And an audio source also comes with it, but we can just ignore that. So now you'll see right at the bottom here, if I just right click this and press move up, we have a new script here called key manager attached to our key manager object. And this, like it says, will show the keys that we have in our inventory. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and create an actual key here. And to do this, I've already, you, well, you should already have your key models downloaded from the previous video when we, when we made a door. And all I'm going to do is come out to my assets tab here, go down to prefabs and open it. And you should see we have doors and keys. If I come into keys and then go to meshes, we should have a key here. 
as well as a lock, but I'm not really going to be using this lock in this series. I'm just going to be using the key. So what I want to do is just go ahead into my hierarchy and create a new 3D object, cube. And there should be a cube that spawns right in front of me. I'm going to move this to be more in the actual area here, just like this. And now I can actually kind of see it better. And what I want to do first is just delete my mesh renderer. So if I right click mesh renderer right here, I can press remove component and this will make it invisible because this is just a trigger. We don't really want it to be showing. Next, I want to go ahead onto this and press add component. And this is going to be a key. So I'm just going to search right up here. I'm going to search key in the search box. And then all of these three should pop up. I'm just going to press key. Next, we actually want this to have a model here, this key model that we chose for it. So to assign this key model, I'm going to first come into this cube here, which I'm going to first rename to, um, let's just call it blue key. And inside of this blue key object here, I will re right click, press create empty. And now we have a game object inside of it. I'll rename this to say model. And inside of this, I can drag my mesh of a key right here into the model area right here, just like that. Now it's a child of this. So when I close it, you can see it opens and it comes and goes away like that. So um, I want this to be on the ground. So I'm going to rotate just like this. And I'm going to hold command if I'm on, on a Mac, hold control if you're on a Windows to make it kind of have this jittery like effect and that allows me to make it at this kind of degree here i'll make it a little bit bigger so it's a little bit more seeable and i also want to add, uh, add a color to this so to do this i'm going to come to my keys area go to textures go to key and i'm going to drag this blue color of key onto it so now we have a key here and it is floating and we can fix that just by bringing it down like this, as long as it stays within your box here, this is your hitbox, then it's okay. And as I can see, it's 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 kind of outside of my hitbox. So I'm gonna kind of bring this back into it, like this. And now it's in the middle, it's somewhere in the middle of my hitbox. Um, so the player won't get mad while they're trying to collect it. I might make this box collider here a little bit smaller on the Y axis by coming over to box collider in the, in the inspector pressing these three dots here next to edit collider. Then I'll just make it smaller like that. I think this is fine and I can kind of move it around as I want to. Yeah, I think this should be, I think this should be a pretty good, pretty decent hitbox. Now we have a key here. However, we still have some references in the inspector that haven't been assigned yet. So I'm gonna, first of all, give this key a name of blue key. And this is the name that I'm gonna give to it. And for the hover icon, I'm going to go up to my canvas, open it, and I'll assign the hover crosshair over to hover icon. Next, for the collect audio, though this is completely optional, you don't have to do it. Um, I'm going to press this dot here, and I gave you an audio, which is called key pickup. So if I just search key right here, I can press key pickup which is the audio that I should have given to you in the Google Drive. Lastly, if I just click this, we will see that we have a working key. So I'm not really going to experiment with this yet because we don't have our door working yet. So to get our door working, I'm actually just going to replace this door with a key door. And that's as simple as just replacing the script that is attached to the door trigger. So if I click this, come into door, and then find my door trigger somewhere. We should see that this is where we have our door manager assigned. Our door script that has a key, uh, or sorry, our, our, um, our object that has the door manager assigned to it. Now what I want to do is I just want to assign, I want to press add component, and I want to assign a key door to it. Meaning that this is now going to become a key door, a locked door. So if I press key door, we should see that we have all of this here. And it does require some references that are the exact same as the references in the door manager. 
So I want to assign these by just first of all coming to cursor hover, right up here, clicking it, and it shows me that there's a cursor hover right here. So I just want to assign the cursor cross here to cursor hover. I want to press this door right here, this door animation object, and it, it kind of exposes it in the hierarchy. So now I can drag this over to my door right here. Next, I want to drag my door open sound over by just clicking on this right here, dragging door open over like this. And for the key name, I'm just going to say blue key. And now I can delete this door manager. Now, because I made the key name blue key, it therefore means that this key right here, this, this blue key is locked on to this key door. So if I change the name from blue key to like, like something that isn't a name at all, this will no longer work because I said that this key right here, this key is named blue key. So the door here wants a blue key. So there we go. Now, if I come into my game, everything should be working except for the, the locked sound, but I'll get to that later. So if I come into my game here, I press play, I wait for it to compile, then I just maximize this. I can walk around to my, my, my key here, and I can see that when I hover over it, the, uh, press, I have to press E to click, uh, to click it. So I'll press E, it plays the sound, and now I can open this door. But if I were to say, reload my game, mm -hmm. And if I, if, I, if I were to go in without collecting the blue key, and I tried to open my door anyway, you'll see that nothing is going to happen. So let's try to do this. We see nothing happens. Now as cool as this is, there, there isn't really too much indication to your player that, um, that, that they need a key. So, but I want the player to know that they have a key, and or sorry, that they need a key to open the door. So to get the player to actually know that they need a key, we're actually going to do a little bit of scripting. Um, and now this part is completely optional, but what, what the script is going to do is essentially it's going to make a locked door sound play. Like it's a locked door and you're trying to open a locked door, but it's not opening. And I've already, I've already given you the audio, which should be in your audio folder, called locked door. Yep, it's right here. And this is, uh, this is essentially what we want to play if we don't have the key. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up to my FX. I'm going to duplicate the door open sound and I will rename it to say locked door. Now in my audio source, I'll have to drag this locked door sound over to the open door, which should replace it. Next, if I come over to my door trigger, I should see in my key door right here that there is a script assigned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this script and it should open it in Visual Studio or whatever whatever text editor you have enabled. Now in this, what I want to do is actually going to be pretty simple. I just want to come up first of all to my references area, give a little bit of space here, and I'm going to type, if I make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, I'm going to type public audio source and I'm going to say locked door sound and then I'm going to put a semicolon. And now if I come down to this area that says on mouse over and go down a little bit, we should see an area right here that says like, um, check to see if the player has the key. And in this, it essentially does a check and sees if the player has a key named the required key in their inventory. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the player does not have a key, I want it to play a sound that is locked. And to do this, I'm just going to come up here and right under my locked door sound that I just created, I'm going to add a new uh, private bool is unlocked. And then I'm going to put a semicolon. And now if I come down to my, my area right here, in this area right under um, km.keysinventory.remove, right under this line, I'm going to say is unlocked equals true. And now we're going to see that we have this area right here. Inside of this for, for each area, there's an open semicolon 
and then it has a corresponding close semicolon. Right after this close semicolon, I'm going to press enter or return, and I'm going to say if exclamation mark is unlocked, or basically if, I'll, I'll make it even simpler, I'll say if is unlocked equals equals false, meaning it is not unlocked, I'll say locked door sound dot play. And then I'm going to put an open parenthesis and a close parenthesis, and then I'll put a semicolon after it. So this is pretty much all that we're going to be doing. This is all the code that we have to do to get this locked sound to play. So now I'm going to go ahead and exit Visual Studio and go back to Unity. And oh yeah, make, make sure that you save that script by just pressing Command S in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. Otherwise your script changes aren't going to be made. But if you have saved your script, then you'll see that there's a new uh, sound here called Locked Door Sound. What we have to do here is pretty simple. We're just going to drag Locked Door over to the Locked Door Sound. And that's, that's about it for this video. So, good job. If I come into my game tab, maximize, and press play, we're going to see that when we try to open our door without having the key, it's going to play a, a locked door sound. So I'll run over here, I will try to open this door, and as you can see, it plays a locked sound. Now if I pick up my key, it plays the sound again, and I try to open my door, and it works. So that is pretty much all I'm going to be showing you how to do in this video. Um, this was a pretty pretty different video where I showed you a little bit of scripting. It was kind of just a sneak peek of scripting though, because uh, you should probably do a little bit more scripting in the future. This is just kind of a very, very basic script for you. So yeah, again, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Annika, uh, Happy New Year, whatever you celebrate, Happy Kwanzaa. Uh, 2023 is right around the corner, and good luck with your game development. This has been the Backrooms Game Lab, I've been Developer Jake, and we will see you in the next one.